Hi and welcome to Waterwise Systems tutorial number three. I hope you've enjoyed the previous two training sessions. If you haven't watched them, I suggest you go back and check them out. Awesome knowledge on how to create your forever shower, constructed wetland, which is a biological sanitation unit for water. I also have taken you on a tour of our fully off the water grid property. So please go back, watch those training sessions. You're gonna learn a ton of new practical information. So as it currently stands here in South Africa, our fellow Cape Tonians are rationed at 50 liters per person per day. If you find it challenging to survive on 50 liters, I strongly recommend that you start implementing water wise systems around your garden and home soon. To wait until day zero when all the water cuts out is going to make your life challenging. It is extremely wise to test your newly built water ecosystem whilst you still have municipal backup and if you do have any questions about getting your home fully off the grid or even partially starting to capture some of your gray water please post them in the comments below and i'll try and answer them as soon as i can carry on watching this tutorial as i'm going to show you an entire mind map where you see how all the gray water black water and water harvesting and filtration systems all come in handy together so you can actually have it laid out in view to see it as clear as daylight and you'll quickly realize that this system is actually not as difficult as you thought and you can build it one piece at a time thanks guys and keep going this water challenge has been a total blessing because it's helping us to become more water self-sufficient around our garden and homes if you're eager beaver to get going on building these systems around your garden and home hit that orange button below and you'll be taken to our information page on our full abundance of water masterclass where you're going to learn how to harvest rain from the roof and in the ground how to build three types of low cost storage how to filter that water with biochar slow sand filtration how to plummet and pressurize it into your house and how to reuse it seven times over whilst making methane gas flushing of loose and growing organic food hit that orange button so you can start learning alternatively carry on watching this training so you can learn more about a water wire system and at the end of the webinar i'm actually going to present you my latest invention and fully off the water grid trailer which is actually a representation of all these systems that i have built around this garden which i have put together in a condensed mobile unit which i'm going to take around the world teaching people how to become water self-sufficient enjoy the training all right so here we are on portable water so <laughs> although everything else is very very important having water is crucial we cannot survive without water for more than three days and neither can our plants so water is the foundation of the entire self-sustainable living here we go let me explain to you in detail so we obviously need to make sure that we have delivery of water to our house which happens by two ways either you have a, a big tower which is quite ugly in the city but that will give you um, 10 meter tower can give you one bar pressure so which is not a lot of pressure generally what comes out of your taps is about two to three bar so <laughs> having a 30 meter tower is just not acceptable so the other way to do it is having a small pressure pump as you've seen in the previous video and um, yeah that will just as soon as you open a tap, the pump kicks in and gives you pressurized water to your house. And that water is, <clears throat> you can disconnect, have a special valve, um, basically disconnecting your municipality grid uh, with the valve, turn it ar around and then turn another valve to allow this pump water to be irrigate, to be plumbed into the house. Well, it's already all plumbed, but to the water, so the water can go into the house. Um, revitalization, I uh, hope I spelled it correct, but that's super important because although water can be cleaned, it's not living water. And a simple rev revitalization instrument is a vortex pipe, which um, I'll be showing in the future how to make in, in our training actually. And all, all flow forms, flow forms are really fun and beautiful way to revitalize water. So if you want to just Google flow forms, they're done by John Wilkins from 1970s. Um, fantastic way to vortex and get water to be living water. And what is living water is what Dr. Motor uh, photographed as those beautiful crystal particles um, by blessing the water, saying thank you to water. So you can do all of that. But if you want to automate things, 
you just put a vortex pipe on your copper inlet pipe into the house and then all the water coming in will be living water. So to feed the revitalization um, part um, or the <laughs> delivery to the house, you need a filter. A filter that will filter your water at a fast rate um, so you can have enough water to bath, shower and drink and you want all this water to be super super clean because our skin being the biggest organ absorbs everything that comes out of a tap or that you get submersed in. So filtration is important and as I've shown you in the previous video um, that biochar filter I had the water tested by um, Setpoint um, which is one of the local companies and the water came about 20 to 100 times better than um, tap water coming out of the tap um, really phenomenal quality and it was a low-cost DIY filter and of course then we have storage that feeds the filtration and um, here we have a variety of options I have a ferrocement tank a beauty about that you can build it for two and a half times to three times cheaper than a plastic tank it will last you 50 to 100 years longer <laughs> than a plastic one and keeping your water cool um, and it's obviously a lot more beautiful than having a plastic tank and you can give it a bit of shape uh, you can even make it look like a, a beautiful huge pot in the garden um, it all depends on your craft, craftsmanship skills but a simple is just a cylinder tank looking like Jojo but it will be made out of ferro cement um, I have a sandbag tank that I was sitting next to um, the cost of materials was about 2000 Rand or $150 <coughs> Phenomenal, phenomenally cheap um, labor was about a, a week and a half for four guys but um, fantastic 16,000 liters I molded it to a straight wall and just adding a beautiful honeycomb effect to an area um, so it fits in nicely to any straight wall you can you can sculpt it according to your pathway um, that's the beauty about sandbags that you're not limited by straight lines at all so if there's a tree in a way you go around the tree and they're very easy to make um, plastic tank that's conventional um, you in our course we actually do cover retrofitting of the plastic tanks to make it um, basically to create a flush out valve so all the gunk that sets at the bottom of the plastic tank the only way to get it out currently is to go in there on knee, hands and knees and basically scoop out the last two three hundred liters with a bucket and then mop it up with a sponge to the last drop so you can clean out all the stuff um, because as soon as the leaves raise get to the point or the muck gets to a point of your outlet which is about 10 15 centimeters lower than the floor higher than the floor and um, then basically all those leaves and max and bird poo are going to start going into your filtration system and you don't want that so um, in the sandbag tank that we've constructed and the ferro cement tank we made a valve at the right at the lowest part of the floor and we actually slanted the floor and it blasts it out completely so you have this fat valve that you can blast the water out with all the muck and then your outlet that feeds the filter is about 15 centimeters higher than that so your filter is always getting much cleaner water the beauty you know if you've built a successful storage if the water coming out of the tank is cleaner due to settling than the water that's coming in from your roof so all this dirt settles at the bottom and you can blast it out and as I said, the outlet is slightly higher, getting much cleaner water in. You know, you've succeeded that way. So we do go through how to retrofit a plastic tank. It's quite easy. Um, underground tank. The, the beauty about this, okay, so it's all got benefits and drawbacks. The benefits is that you, you put a tank in massive, 40,000 liters, 50,000 liters, and um, you build a, a, a dome above it, or if it's a rectangular tank, you build a vault, which is a singular curvature um, roof. Um, there's lots of traditional vaults out there, you can Google, but anyway, so it's a, it's a ferro cement vault, and then, um, so it's a rounded roof, but it's in the same, the top of the roof is in the same level as the ground. So then the, you, you, you add the soil to completely cover it, 
So when you walk on top of it, it looks like you know the rest of your garden, and then you obviously got the manhole, which um, which you know gives you access to in and out of the tank, maintain your pump or clean out if you ever need. Um, and then the manhole obviously should must have a ladder on such a big tank. In fact, any anything taller than you, you should have even just a rope that just hangs in there because if your kids, somebody just plays and then they fall in, at least with this ladder, um, they will be able to get out. Um, so crucial to have a little, little, just a rope ladder, something to be able to come out of the tank. Because um, obviously this is now three meters deep, about four meters wide, <coughs> and um, either rectangular shape, as I said, or round shape, which I'm constructing in my garden. Um, so, and the drawback of this is that you want super clean water going in here. So you want like maybe a preliminary um, filter, like a gravel and sand filter, just a simple filter that will take care of any muck that's coming in. You want a leaf catcher first and then maybe even a first flush, uh, so you, you want basically super clean water going in because the only way to get the muck out of this thing is to pump the water out, the remainder of it, and um, of course then you go and you broom it up and you sweep it and you take the rest out. Um, and then of course we've got eco pool and in a lot of properties already have eco pools. Well, I mean, natural, normal pools, and then a, a conversion to an eco pool is quite simple. It's very similar to the constructed wetlands that I've been showing you, um, with gravel, and you, you don't see the water at all. I, well, I've got two types of wetland. The one you do see the water, and that's where you plant your water lilies, which are very, very beautiful. And then whenever I find any frogs, I just throw them in, the, in there. And then you've got the I've got the main filter, which doesn't use. You don't see the water. I mean, the water is in the ground level, and then above it is gravel and you plant all your plants into the gravel and um, voila you've got a natural pool and the plants do all the treatment for you they take out the nutrients and the nutrients is what make your pool go green and funny so the plants use up nutrients and algae to thrive and algae cannot really grow in um, I wouldn't say sterile but it's but it's but the water got no nutrient value in it so the algae doesn't really like that. So that's how you control your algae levels. You just put in more plants and the plants take care of algae because of, um, it can't thrive in a sterile water. But it's not sterile, it's actually living water. There's a lot of life that's happening there. There's little, little bugs on the floor of the pool. Um, and then I still have my barracuda running for about an hour and a half a day, which does the cleaning um, or the scrubbing of the floor and picking up of the set the, 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 the algae, the little bit of algae that I have it does settle at the bottom and the barracuda picks it up or once a week we'll have a gardener that just you know can vacuum it up for half an hour anything that settles if you don't want to run barracuda at all the whole week that's also perfect and then the rest of the time my solar panel takes over and um, d does its thing and, and just circulates through both wetlands and then the water drops back into the pool and that's how, that's how it works and then we have eco pond um, very simple construction here you basically you don't even need um, I mean you could add a little pump that just circulates the water in itself and has a little water feature it could be nice for sound you know definitely having some waterfall sound in your garden but the beauty about the pond is that you, you literally put the the plants around the edge of the uh, pond which you can do that in a pool if it's like a whole serious retrofit and you big building skills you know but he, the pond yeah it's much easier you actually have the plants submerged in the pond in little special baskets also have a bit of gravel and then the the roots are in the gravel and then the frogs come and you can have a couple of fish there um really awesome with kids your kids are going to love it you're going to love it there's going to be dragonflies and just lots of life um it's just awesome <laughs> all right so what feeds the storage is your harvesting so you need to harvest water to get it into storage and um so there is hard surface so anything like anything hard um meaning it's not soft ground, grass or whatever, um, anything hard is a pavement, road or roof. Um, so 
we'll start with the roof and the roof needs a leaf catcher. A leaf catcher is something that basically catches the leaves that are sitting in your gutter or lying on top of your roof and the leaf catcher um, doesn't allow that those leaves to go into your storage. Um, it's a nice leaf catcher will let the water in but the leaves it will blast it out when the gushes of water coming in from the rain the torrents are coming in and then the leaves will fall to the le to one side and the cleaner water will go inside and it's got a fine screen um, and then of course the gutters get fed from there um, from your roof and look, the quality of the roof is also important. I mean, I've got the worst roof for catching water, um, and that's a grass roof. And the problem with grass roof, it's just leaches a whole bunch of constantly, you know, obviously rot rotting grass. Um, not a problem, it's not toxic or anything, but uh, yeah, definitely the pollution gets stuck to that grass, and then it's so that's why it's super important for me to have a leaf catcher. And, and what I've done is I made socks for all my gutters <clears throat> that are out of shade netting like just yeah like socks like your pants you wear so they <laughs> they put right across all the gutters and they make sure that um those particles majority of those particles get stuck on top of the shade cloth getting the cleaner water in and um, because if i have to take those socks off my gutters would be full after two weeks literally full of just dead grass so at least this way they, they stay on top and then when the sun comes out they dry up and a bit of wind um, or you know it just blows them off the sock and then I have obviously uh, somebody that uh, more in my case a gardener that comes once a month and then he just uses a little broom and he just um, cleans out the gutters or anything that's sitting on top there from that those socks so, so maintenance is important another interesting way um, is to have a ground trench around your roof it's quite an easy way especially for grass roofs this would be very interesting to do and definitely will work um, but you have a trench let's say 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters wide right underneath where the water falls so obviously in, in a harsh rain you need to go out and see where the water falls maybe you know draw it out or make notes or scratch it on your bricks or, or wherever you want to make this and then you dig out a trench uh, you know similar to French drain um, let's say 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters or not even that deep maybe even 20 centimeters deep which is the size of your spade um, the end of your spade the shovel part of your spade so let's imagine that trench and then that runs right around your house um, make sure you get your slope correct obviously so um, you know shave the soil so to the point where you want this water to flow towards the central point and then um, you fill that trench I would, I would put a uh, um, same as French drain bottom cloth all the way around and then just sides, bottom and I would actually and then, uh, and then I'd put the stones, the gravel right into the trench and then I'd cover the the um, the bottom cloth, the top of the stones as well. So the, what this will make sure that these stones will never get mud in them or and the bottom cloth allows the water to penetrate quite easily and what I would do is I'll put a layer of gravel on top so you don't see this um, cloth at all so you just see gravel and what happens is any water coming down from your roof will drop in into this trench because it's so porous gravel being such big pore spaces between it and and bottom allows water to come in and um, but yet the muck out and then um, yeah you have basically cleaner cleaner water going into your water so the drawback with that is that you can't um, harvest water at height um, because you know you want you want to try and get water as high as possible so it can feed your biochar filter or you can feed your filter without a pump as soon as you have um, this trench you you basically keeping the water right in the ground level and um, your storage will need to be obviously lower than that that means that any water that you want to get into the house must be pumped up um, well it will have to be pumped anyway with pressure to pressurize into the house but now you have to have an extra pump to have the water being pumped to, into your filter so you know so this would be great for example to top up your pool um, 
but again, I wouldn't run it into the pool straight away because my pool went super green when I channeled my rain water from my roof into my pool. So I'd, I'd put that first into the wetland and then let the wetland overflow into the pool. But these are, <laughs> these are little logistics of that. Um, another interesting thing, uh, as you saw last uh, week, uh, when you saw that um, movie in the previous movie, uh, the webinar series, I installed the first flash. And the first flash is um, basically a drum and it, it replaces a leaf catcher. So it allows all the water from your gutters <clears throat> and your roof to first fill up that drum. So if it hasn't rained for a month, let's say, and your roof is a bit dirty, so all the water coming in, the first 200 liters or the size of this drum will be obviously filled up with dirty water and leaves and whatever is uh, muck there. You don't want too many leaves either. So you do want to maintain your gutters, uh, you know, once in a while, just have them cleaned out, especially in autumn after autumn when there's a big leaf fall. But let's say your gutter's got like a, a few leaves and bird poo and a bit of pollution and some dirt stuck to the roof. So the first flush will take all that water and when, it gets, when that drum gets filled up, the, all the extra water goes into your storage. So leaving the storage with much cleaner water and in the first flush you've got also a big valve and you blast that water out into your garden or wherever and all the leaves and bird poo actually go there and not into your storage so that's quite important um, and then if you can also catch water from pavement and road but you'll need to have a preliminary debris trap whether it's a screen of some sort because with road can come a lot of sediment and you know paving obviously less but especially road definitely have some preliminary trap or for sediment trap uh, um, I don't go into it now for the sake of time, but just it would look something like even a, a, um, a little a, a trench or hole in the ground where it allows the, the, the debris to fall in and be screened by um, a finer mesh and then the cleaner water goes through uh, and then overflows into your um, garden and wherever you want to send it to. But this is a lot of water. We're talking you could have... 400,000 liters come down and if you're not watching it in, in one rain, um, especially on the road. So the road runoff is something I would do as a last thing once you've experienced it with everything else, but it's masses of water. You, you could tap into, you could fill up your entire pool three times in one rain. Um, and then you've got paving. Um, paving is a much cleaner water because it's your paving. It's just, you know, your car standing, providing it's not leaking oil. Um, yeah, and paving that I've shown you in the previous video that where I've got the um, water going into my garden to four to, with four big ten centimeter pipes, and then that water is going into the um, garden and um, into my aquaculture system into to flush out the wetlands. Um, yeah, so you can channel it in different directions. Watch the previous video; of just the system I created. And that's it for water. All right, so here we go. This is the blueprint for the trailer that I've just quickly put together for you guys. So we have the front of the trailer here. Um, well, the front of the trailer is actually here. If you know, that's the part that will be closest to the vehicle um, or the mobile home. And the right side of the trailer is here with um, whichever side of, let's call it the, the food grower side here. And then you've got <clears throat> the, the, on the sunny side, you've got the wetland side. So the wetland side would be on this side of the trailer. So let's say the sun would come in from here. Yeah, so the wetlands would be on these, these drums are the wetlands. And then this is the back of the trailer, looking at it from the back. And then this drum would be um, a profile of these two drums. Okay. So what we have here is we have water coming in. Let's start with something simple like kitchen water. So the kitchen water will come in, it will enter a grease trap, which has got a basket here that will collect bits and pieces. And here is a little simple plate. Um, in this webinar, you've already learned how to make a grease trap. So uh, <clears throat> the water will be much cleaner and then the cleaner water will go through um, A in a circle. So anything in the circle is outlets. Anything with these spiky, starry thing is the inlets. Okay, so what we have here is we have water going out to a nearby tree 
uh, out here to a tree or level trench, which is um, obviously something we teach in our course. Um, the abundance of water course and then so that's the inlets of uh, and then the outlet okay um, then we have gray water from the bath so that P inlet from bath or shower there it is it comes in and drops in through the rockery entrance and the reason for the rockery is so the water can drop in real fast uh, without any obstructions and then it's got lev gra uh, gravel and obviously in in this trailer situation I would strongly recommend using pumice or lightweight aggregates so it's chunks of pumice, it's not powder, it's not little pieces, it's literally 13 to 16 millimeter uh, chunks of pumice, um, or if it's not a, tra a trailer, then gravel stone. Then it's got a layer of sand, and then it's got a layer of soil, that soil does not mix with the, um, with the gravel stone. So the sand is there to, to, to uh, prevent sand, uh, soil from mixing. And then you obviously got your plants. You could use an extra cage, uh, to create a greenhouse uh, for the plants, which is super cheap. Those drums are really useful. They're called flow bins. And if you just use the cage uh, from the flow bin um, and wrap it in clear plastic, then you've got a nice little greenhouse. And here what I've recommended is to create an additional wetland on top. So you have water will be dripping down and then, you know, you could have a circulation. So that's obviously something up for experimenting, but those vertical wetlands are, are really great, but you know, as a starter, just create a wetland, put a, a cage on top um, for colder winter time or colder climates. So there it is. So basically, water will travel in, it will go up because hot water rises and uh, it will go down. So I would recommend obviously having your shower uh, in a slightly higher situation, otherwise, you need to pump um, water to here. As it is, it's uh, about uh, 45 centimeters, one, two, three, four, yeah, 40, 50 centimeters. So it's a half a drum, so you'll use half a drum. So one drum will give you two of these wetlands, which is very cost effective. Those drums are super cheap. I think they're under $50 for a secondhand drum. Um, okay, so in here you've got an outlet, which is the pipe <clears throat> uh, with some holes drilled at the bottom and then You've covered it with bidum cloth, so the roots don't block it up, and then the water allows to e exit. So you force the water, it goes uh, down, it comes, see there's an opening here, that's why that rock is sticking out. So uh, the water enters at the bottom only, wa warm water rises, and then you force it down through the bottom. So it gets a maximum path of travel. And um, <clears throat> here you've got, um, and then here you can put up a, a pump, uh, that's B is that pump for gray water irrigation um, and toilet flushing. So that's a standard 12 volt pump and it works like a pressure switch. So as soon as the toilet is flushed or you open the tap, it kicks in and it starts working. Obviously the trailer has a solar panel as you saw, um, wherever you can place it. I've placed it on the front there. Um, so that's pretty much it. An important part of this is that uh, you've got from the food grower, which obviously this is now the, the other side of the trailer. So the food grower is higher. You've got the earthworm tea that will, uh, you know, it will actually drip into this uh, uh, part where the pump sits. So, but I, I had to show it to you like this, but you know, obviously it's not going to go up. It's going to go down, but it's two sides of the trailer. So from the food grower, from, from, from the worm tower, the, the, the tea, the earthworm tea will come in with this green line and actually drop in here and the pump will irrigate this uh, water to your garden. So, well, you know, obviously that won't work for the toilet flushing. So if you're toilet flushing, you won't run the earthworm tea here. You could run the earthworm tea in a bucket and then sprinkle it over your flowers or, or whatever. Or you could put it back over into the food grower. Um, so the food grower also uses the same drum. It's got a 150 liter drum, which is the same drum as for the biochar filter. You drill some holes into it, and um, that's that's your worms. So everything for the worms, you, you obviously don't feed them citrus, onion, meat, fish, or fats. No citrus, no onion, no meat, fish, or fats, uh, but all other kitchen scraps, um, vegetable scraps, uh, fruit scraps, um, go there and you could cover it with a layer of grass clippings and these are special worms that don't really need soil they just eat grass clippings and and food waste and they turn that into soil which uh, I've got a whole two-hour thing on worms in my course so 
um, yeah. Um, obviously, you've got your pockets of uh, food grower, the, which is these side pockets that the, the veggies are going to pump out from there. Loads of veggies. Um, and uh, the food grower will be utilized from both sides, not from three sides. Um, and then on the non sunny side, you've got these trays of uh, wheat grass, which you saw me standing next to the food grower. Um, and the trays are standard trays and they have a bracket, uh, a metal bracket that clips in so easy into this cage that is already surrounded. So that's where you saw the whole not, not shaded side, the unproductive side is covered in these trays. And what we have here is at the bottom, there is a, a metal or galvanized tray that catches all the excess water and that could circulate back in to, um, you know, that, that you, you, you could have a little pump circulating that water. Um, it will go to aquaponic system. So aquaponic system is actually sits here underneath and there is fish there. It's full of fish and the fish are... Um, you know, pooping and they need a pump here to take this water, push it um, up through the food grower. Um, obviously these sides, the food, the, the, the food will clean it up and um, create uh, cleaner water for, for the fish and then that will keep on circulating between these two drums. So it will actually be beneficial to put this drum, now that I'm thinking, on top of the fish drum because then it can just drop in there nice and easy or you can just have a little plumbing you know uh, uh, attachment and um, originally so, so so obviously fish is something it's a whole another story but as long as their water is clean um and the right ph and all of that but that's a whole another story i can't teach that right now um but the possibility is to uh, to have the fish under the food grower and the food grower cleans water for the fish and that's why the earthworm tea which is the nutrients for your all your compost does not just drip into the food grower um it will or it does not drip into the fish place because it'll just be too much nutrients for them we're trying to get the water clean with less nutrients for the fish and um and the plants will take up the nutrients to thrive um, and the food grower will um the, the worm tower will leak excess earthworm tea to your part where you irrigate your plants or, or in a separate bucket. Here you've got a little um, pipe at the bottom that you can get in and scrape out the compost. Um, as you scrape out the compost here, um, becomes a cavity, so the all the stuff drops down. And as it drops down, you can add more compost from top. So, you know, basically you take out from here and you feed from top. So that's the food grower and I've got a whole module on food grower in my course as well. So we'll learn how to build that from start to finish. Um, originally I've designed a sewerage in this drawing. You can see there's a sewerage inlet. So the water from sewerage goes in and this is a biogas digester with a gas pipe will be coming out here. And gas pipe will go straight to your um, uh, gas stove as a backup obviously. Um, but seeing how small the space is. Um, I, I would I would rather have the food grower extended, make the food grower super tall, so double the height, so you have extra extra veggies, um, and lose the whole biogas digester here. But nevertheless, if you do have additional space, I'd put in at least four more of these wetlands, or if you have vertical stacking wetlands, you could get away with two, but definitely at least two wetlands with. A vertical stacking additional wetlands so you have, now you have four wetlands four four sets of plants that, that will treat this water in constant circulation so in the front of the trail as you saw in a 3d render um, there is this box and this box also uh, allows so uh, so here is a pump that sits and takes water from the bottom of the biogas digester and circulates it through the rock, same story, the sand here separating the soil from mixing the gravel goes through and then it overflows back into the biogas digester. Um, don't look at my drawing in terms of the, the how the pipes are, the, that's not how the pipes are going to be, I'm just showing you the information, the water movements, you know, but it all will flow because that's higher than the biogas digester. So the, so the story here is also again, constant circulation, constant circulation. Um, and, and um, just to go back, you don't need to have a pump here. Th these weed grass trays and on the, non on the shaded side, they could just get, um, you know, 
they, they could just get um, a sprinkle of water coming uh, from um, either of the pumps when 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 for example this pump kicks in it could it could be on a timer so if your toilet is not doesn't need flushing and if your tap is closed then um, once twice a day the water will go to this to these trays and irrigate them with nutrient rich um, earthworm tea uh, cleaned gray water from your bath and shower so that water will just pump up to the tops of these trays and it will give it like a quick sprinkle of two minutes or you need to set the time obviously according to so that all these trays get water and then as soon as all these trays got water right to the bottom the timer goes off and this tray catches any excess water um, and then that could drain out to wherever you need the water to go um, um, but the bottom line is that you're not going to have this muck of mess of uh, you know clay and dirt mixing up here and then eventually the trailer will start skidding or sliding <laughs> so you, that's why you have a tray and then the water is directed by a pipe you know somewhere away um, so that's and then you've got obviously the the biochar filter so here's your clean water storage and that will get water from your gutter roof gutter so this is just a backup you know obviously it's not a hell of a lot of water but you know, it, 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 as a backup, you've got a thousand liters, and then you've got 200, 150 liters of very clean water here. So that water goes through the biochar filter, which we also teach in our course, and then it overflows. Uh, so this is a, a stone upflow stone, it goes through the stones. There is a ball valve, toilet ball valve here, and it goes up through the stones, overflows through the sand, um, and then goes up and then overflows through the biochar, and then up and then you've got the clean water here and then number n uh, letter n is your tap for uh, clean water or your water organizing module so here you could have a pump to pressurize this water to your tap and um, like an earthship water organizing module that that would feed that so but it doesn't need all the additional filters because this is super clean water um yeah so, so you've got so basically you've got rainwater harvesting goes in here um and this storage could be much bigger but obviously not on a trailer elsewhere and um, then you've got obviously feeding the biochar filter so that's your clean water that's your uh, overflow from sewage so treated sewage that's been circulating through a wetland or two or three wetlands and then that water goes to um, you know even your vegetables it could feed them because this water is going to be much cleaner already or if you just a biogas digester could take uh, its effluent overflow straight to a nearby tree. A tree can take raw sewage, um, obviously depends on your soil type, but uh, a tree can take uh, raw sewage and not have any uh, pathogens in the final fruit. Um, and then you've got grey water from your bath coming in or shower and then you've got obviously the pump that sits here that irrigates the trays, um, flushes the loose and when you open the tap, it will irrigate your veggies uh, with uh, either drip irrigation, which is highly advisable, um, or um, you know by hand. Um, yeah, but you will have that pump here, which is all 12 volt, obviously. So that's it for the trailer. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, but obviously in the course, uh, at a later stage, uh, later in the course, we will be, um, you know, we are we do build. We build all these components separately already. So you'll learn how to create it from start to finish. Um, I can't guarantee that the tires will handle and how many axles you need to have. You know, we haven't weighed it all up, but definitely use lightweight aggregates. And when you move the trailer from one spot to another, you drain all water from all uh, containers, which means that your 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 trailer will just weigh you know the the weight of the lightweight aggregates which is minimal and the weight of the containers which is minimal and then therefore it's transportable obviously these trays of wheat grass will come down and pack away into the front of the trailer this trailer and this tray that collects excess water and clips also gets packed away so you know you, you you're safe you're legal you're on the road and off you go i hope you have enjoyed this training and i look forward to be seeing you in our digital classroom have a great day